the right beck and calls. calls. Welcome back, and if you didn't already guess it, we are here at NASA in Houston today. So here where the first word that was spoken on the moon was said from Houston. Oh yeah, yeah. So we're going to get in here, check it all out, pretty excited for today, and um, yeah, got to get through the doors first. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's go. go. Had our photo taken. Yeah, got a free postcard. Got a free postcard. Now we're in. 1926. <laughs> First rocket that someone made. Yeah. This is it's like kind of like they've themed it like we're out of space yeah. already. Yeah. Here you go, here's Explorer 1. Full scale replica of Explorer 1, the first American satellite sent into orbit. There's so much to look at and it's so dark I don't know where to go. There's an astronaut above us. Oh look, they've got their lunar capsule open. Or oh, whatever it is. That's Yeah. That's crazy. Okay. Hmm. Docking hatch for what? Apollo 17 spacecraft. So it's from Apollo 17 to the lunar module. Which, that goes on top of that. This is the uh, Apollo 17 command module. You know, Apollo 17 was the last mission of Project Apollo. The Apollo 17 spacecraft was the last manned spacecraft to have traveled to the moon. And it's talking about how it's all charred from the extreme heat from when it was returning to the Earth. So this is the actual module. Wow. The one that they uh, yeah. got back. So it comes back to Earth from the bottom down. So that the big base at the bottom is actually the part that enters Earth first. Hmm. And then the parachutes and everything go up the top. They're in the safest position on the way down, so... Head first. Yep. Pretty much. There's your thrusters for when they're out of space, I believe. Those little ones there, are your thrusters. Well, they're all over it. Yeah, I think they are. Because look, you've got angled ones here so it can spin. Positioning thrusters. So underneath here, this is what enters the earth. This is where all the heat shielding is. Now you can see some of it's broken away and stuff from re entry. Oh, yeah. Here, the moon is up there, and here we are on the moon. It's a replication. Maybe this is where they filmed it, Stacey. Oh look, the flag's not moving, so it could have been. It looks pretty real. So it's reported that during a lunar day, you can't actually see stars, as you can't see stars from the Earth's surface during the day. So, <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah, even though there's no atmosphere in it, you still can't see the stars. Yeah, when on the moon, when it's during the day, so if the sun is shining on the moon's surface, yeah. you can't see stars. But if it's during the night, like if you're on the other side, yeah. of the, the dark side of the moon, then sh you can sh see the stars. Same as on Earth. Yeah. You can't see stars during the day, but you can see them during the night. Hmm. It's interesting. Never thought of that. No. That's what this is representing. So it's representing the sunlight 
on the surface and then you can see Earth as well, but you can't see stars. It's just nothing but the dark abyss. Yeah, that's something new for me to learn. <laughs> So, we get to go on the shuttle, I think. No way. So this is a Boeing 747. It was used to carry the shuttle. Flax on this plane before we go up and check it out. What is that? Sorry, I've just found an alien. What? <laughs> that is definitely a bug from outer space. So it's got teeth on its back. That's a weird looking Anyway, getting back to the facts. So we've got wingspan 59.6 meters, length 70 meters. Four engines, big engines. Well, this engine's starting to fire up. Watch out, Stace. It'll suck you in. Tells you how much wind we got today. Oh, you can go into the plane. There you go. Phantom Ray, two ferry flights. Endeavour took 12 times. Spaceship Atlantis took 35 times on the back of this plane. 38 times for Discovery. 20 times for Challenger. 60 for Columbia. The Enterprise, 57 ferry flights. Five free flights. So I didn't think we'd get on another plane this early <laughs> in our trip. Going home. <laughs> built from moments of inspiration, followed by years of sheer hard work. It's really weird being inside a plane without seats. Yeah. Yeah. So they actually removed a lot of Boeing's like fixtures to make it lighter on weight. So that's why you'll see the roof is exposed and stuff. Because they want to make it as lightweight as possible. Yeah. It's got a big plane on it. Yeah. Big well, it's got a spaceship on it. It's one of the stranger 65,000 pound space shuttle. Look at that. Who dreamed up this remarkable partnership of an airplane and an orbit? Huh. Stacy. This is an actual model. Yeah. They built to, to check base. and make sure it worked. Name, to see the motors? Yeah, what's the fluid? Yeah. <laughs> they had to check to make sure it would work. Back to Cape Canaveral for the next launch. When John Kiker proposed his piggybacking idea to NASA officials, there it is there. They were off. We faced some very bad landings and we banged up the wing. By refining the models and test after test, John Kiker and his team finally achieved success. So we talked to our airlines people. There you go. See, so that's an actual model there they flew. Yeah, that's crazy. In that case. Yeah, how it was gutted completely. Yeah. Which you can see as you look down. Yeah. Save as much weight as possible. This in front of us is actually how they loaded the shuttle onto the plane. Thirty meter towers. See now it can be low lowered because it was in position. Good work, team. The other two kids got it right with me. I had to move to a different console. The kid that was over here just had no idea. <laughs> It would take 24 hours to load it, to lift it, load it, get it on top of the plane. 24 hours. It's a long time. Here we are, we're up here at the top of the space shuttle. This went into outer space. It's, in, it's insane to think about. But here we are, up the top now. And there she's, is her name, the Independence. 
They've got all the windows blocked off so the sun doesn't damage anything on the inside. Right. Stick your head in there. Okay. It's all lit up like a Christmas tree. Yeah. It's like something you see out of a movie. So we're currently in the cargo hold. So these doors would open out above us. Oh yeah. So yeah, fold out and this one will fold out. And this is a cargo bay, so they have things in here, to experiments, all different things like that. And you're in the cargo bay. There's a launch and entry suits. It's all their lockers. Oh, okay. Each individual locker. The house and stuff. Yeah. That's them putting on their gear to go out to do experiments and stuff. Need a fair few people to help you get it on. <laughs> there you go. You get to have a really good up close and personal look. Little landing gear. Stacey, these wheels here come out of this section. So they will pivot and tuck away into there, into that compartment. And then these rear wheels will tuck away and pivot up into there. Pretty insane. Something you don't get to look at every day. The uh, and the brakes. God, there's a lot of um, pistons on that brake the whole way around on each wheel. So when we're at Disney, one of these took off. One of the space the SpaceX nine rockets took off. So we were able to see that from about 100 kilometers away, which is pretty remarkable. Um, you know, nothing like being there. It would have been awesome to be there, but it is what it is. And um, at least we got to experience that, you know, the launch of that Falcon 9 rocket, which we're about to see on the ground here. Yeah. There's one on display. But, oh, wow, look at the um, view from behind. It doesn't get much bigger than that. Well, let's wander down here and go and check out the Falcon 9 SpaceX rocket. So this is part of the uh, the rockets that SpaceX are designing and made. And uh, yeah, they re-land these, believe it or not. So they re-land these days. They, they re-enter Earth and then they, once they re-enter from the nose in, then they flip them around in, in the atmosphere, in and then before they hit the ground, they control the flight and they fire them back up and they gently land them back on the pad. That's crazy. <laughs> Explains it all here. So they launch here, they ascend, they separate, right? Then this part, the bottom part, which is what we're looking at here, right? Does a flip maneuver and then it comes back down Grid fins, fins deploy, which we're going to have a look at up here. And then it re-enters the atmosphere. Then it'll use aerodynamic guidance and traject itself back to where it's got to land. And then it'll flip. No, it's already flipped, so It's already flipped. Yeah, they do. So then, yeah. And then Vertical landing. these to guide them back into re-entry. So coming back to Earth, that's what's used to help stabilise it and everything. These grid things. And then before they land, they shoot the rockets back up and nice and gentle land. Didn't always go like that though. <laughs> so they've got, this is where the payload and everything goes on the front. So it's pretty amazing that what re-enters the Earth is the rear end. So where the rocket boosters are, that's what 
that's what takes it out of Earth, and then that's what comes back, first thing that comes back into Earth. So the re-entry is actually at the other end. This, this is just the tail end. Even yeah. though it's the nose going out, it's the tail end coming back in. Mm. That view does not get boring. Oh look, they have a um, space shuttle experience, but it's closed down. I really would have enjoyed that, I would have given that a good whirl. It's time for a quick bite of lunch at the food lab. We loved that there was a good range of options. Once decided, we used the self-serve machine to make our selections pay and out popped your order number. I went for a nice freshly made yummy pizza and Dylan got a nice quesadilla. We have three dipping sauces and his favourite was definitely the guacamole. <laughs> How's your pizza? It's a basic pizza, but it's made fresh. Mm. It's nice and soft, soft dough. But we get to sit in this amazing room. There's at least there's something to look at. It's all around us. Pretty amazing. Yeah. So we're gonna finish up food and then I guess we're going to go into one of the other exhibits. Yeah. Right here. Let's finish this up and head on out. So it appears that we're going to go what over to the Saturn Five rocket. I think it's the Saturn Five. But yeah, we already seen one of those at Fort Lauderdale. Got to see an enormous one in the building there. We're going to go for another one of those, I think. Which they're the rockets that took everyone to the moon. So on board one of the trolleys. And we're gonna head all the way over there. Under the freeway over here, all the way up and over. Here to our right is the home of the Saturn V rocket. This area is known as the George W. S. Abbey Rocket Park. To this day, the Saturn V is the tallest, heaviest, and most powerful rocket ever built. They drop you off at the bottom side of the rocket and you can explore here for as long as you like or at least until the last shuttle back for the close of NASA. Before we enter the enormous building for the Saturn V, we thought we would check out this display of rockets and engines. This here is the Mercury Redstone rocket, which made history with two flights when they took the first and second Americans into space. This is a H1 engine. It was used on Saturn 1 and Saturn 1B rockets used for Apollo spacecraft tests. It propelled liquid oxygen and kerosene and gave a thrust of 205,000 pounds force. These J2 engines were used on the Saturn 1B and the Saturn 5 rockets, launches from the late 1960s through the mid 1970s. They propelled liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen with a thrust of 230,000 pounds force. Yo, Saturn 5 for the second time. Oh, this one's on the ground. This looks bigger than the other one because it's on the ground down here with us, whereas the other one was up so high. Yeah. It was on So they park this one here and just build the building around it. So there ain't nowhere it's going. So it has five of that engine strapped on the back of it. So that is stage one. From there, to the back. So stage one, not sure if we did this at the last place, but it is, stage one is 42 meters tall, 10 meters in diameter, and has five F1 engines. 77,500,000 pounds of force in thrust. Two and a half minutes of burn time. Damn. Huh. We're already talking about the Artemis. The SLS. How much bigger and badder and better they are. Because that's what we're going to have. The SLS is on the new rockets that they're sending out. The Artemis missions. So this is the block two. So it attaches from there, 
and then keeps firing. Moon quick. After leaving Moon, LM crash into Moon Earth. This stage two. This one's also 10 meters in diameter, but it's only 25 meters, 24.9 meters in length compared to stage one. And it's got five J2s, so it's got five smaller engines. And these only put out 1,125,000 pounds. <laughs> Doesn't need as much grunt. No, so it puts out like one one sixth of the the grunt. Yeah. And it burns for six minutes this one. So this is just getting it up to the velocity that it needs to get to the moon. There's another J2 engine by the looks of it. So stage three, which is this section here, right in front of us. Oh yeah, one J2. So I was right. I called it a J2 and. Looks like the others. So this one here's diameter is only six meters. Six point six meters in diameter. Its height is seventeen meters. So that's part of stage three. We've got stage four and five down the end. Can we look at the picture? It's supposed to be back of the tram, back of the tram. Like a speedy way to get around. Maybe this is like a cargo hold? So there's the nose cone, that's where the astronauts and that would be in. That's the re-entry pod. But then their life module and that would be this piece here. The Lunar Lander's garage is in there. So you should be able to see that in that image just there. There's, this camera will not do any justice for how enormous this is. That's what took everyone to the moon. So, we're growing and they're back at it again real soon. Yep, which is awesome. Soon we'll be on Mars. Yeah, and we'll be alive to see it. <laughs> Love you too, hopefully. That was a nice quick ride. Yeah. It's about a minute. Takes you from the Saturn V back to the, the Space Center. So this is the new spacecraft they're going to be using. Hmm. So they're still keeping that same design. It must be the best design there is. The capsule design. Yeah. For a return and re-entry, it must be the best design. So that's going to be on the top of the SLS, I believe. Is this for the SLS? Yeah, it is. So this is the new engines for the SLS. And it's saying that this engine burns clean and its exha exhaust is water vapor, not smoke. Radiation uh, suit that we're going to have for deep space travel. Okay. So if anyone that's going to go to Mars, or, yeah. Uh, covers your vital organs. Yeah. Uh, Solid rocket boosters. We've got four of those engines. Sitting at the bottom of it. Launch vehicle stage adapter. And there's the different pods. So the Orion spacecraft, which is what we just looked at there. That's going to be at the very nose cone. There's a little engineer over here for science reference. Oh really? Yeah, see? Huh. That's how big it is. So that's us down there. Yeah. Even you next to it, it's still easily God, 10 meters tall. Okay, I did 
dinosaur. Grant and I did that together. We dropped it on target one. We did. So confused. An alien. Not expect to see some of these displays at NASA, but it was interesting nonetheless. Behind Dylan, displayed on the wall, is photos of all the crew members that have flown NASA space missions. It was very awe inspiring. Let's fly. Who would have thought we'd be playing Donkey Kong at NASA? <laughs> we really enjoyed the interactive activities they have here. Dylan here is scanning through footage of how they land a rover on Mars. Huh. Over here, babe. Is that really how they land a rover on Mars? <laughs> R2? Yeah. R2D2? Full size? <laughs> I think we're already at that. Yeah, we already got that. Oh. <laughs> oh, I found a license plate. Oh, did you? Almost. <laughs> but now I noticed that I found it up there behind you. Yeah. Now I notice there's different ones. Yeah, there's even a big one behind you. There's even a bigger one. <laughs> so I don't know. So I just yeah. stepped in the store and better. And I found this straight off the bat. As big as the store was. Yeah, as big as the store was at Fort Lauderdale, this feels like it has to be more How much do you reckon? Like 80. 89. Oh, 89. Wow. Mate, hey. well, it's been a great day. Thank you, NASA, for having us here in Houston. Yeah. And uh, yeah, now we've got a. What time is it? Five. Five, yeah. Spent the whole day here. Yeah, so, it was worth it. It's good. So, yeah, thank you. Got some goodies. It's always a uh, pleasure taking my money. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, you learn anything special today, Stace? Um, not really, except for the moon, you can't see stars when it's um, the right time. That was all I took. You didn't me. learn anything. <laughs> I don't so really what she's much trying to say is that when it's daytime on the moon and the, the sun is shining on the surface of the moon and you're standing there, you cannot see any stars. It's just like being in daytime here. You can't see any stars during the day. But as soon as it goes dark, you can. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's all I learned. <laughs> you didn't learn it. You still haven't learned it. Yeah. Um, I had yeah. fun walking through anyway. Just enjoying looking at all the cool things. Probably my highlight was, uh, I would say personally, going on to the Independence on the space shuttle. That was pretty good. Yeah. Um, it was crowded on there though, so I couldn't really, really enjoy it as much as I wanted to. But um, nevertheless, still an experience. So thank you for coming along with us today. It's been an absolute pleasure on our end. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye.